Well, what is going on, YouTube? Welcome back to Therapeutic Edge. It is very nice to have you here today. I have something on the table that has made a lot of noise lately. A lot of channels got it. A lot of channels loved it. I haven't really been into Civivi very much of late. Um, but this one, this one caught my eye. But before we get into that, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and hit the like button. It does help the channel, and I'd love to have you here on a regular basis. So what is this? Well, many of you already know, because I'm not first at all with this. This particular knife is the Civivi Conspirator, and uh, it's really good. Um, I love Civivi knives, but lately they have taken to doing what I call the interchangeable blade and handle game, where they'll make one knife and then they'll make 75 different versions of it, and they'll take one blade and drop it on a slightly different handle and one slightly different handle. And anyway, they kind of lost my interest, but this, this is very good. The Conspirator is a decent sized knife. It has an excellently neutral shaped handle. It's got a Nitro V blade that is nice and tall and came very sharp. It is a button lock and they really have finally mastered this completely. Mine has no stick, no lock, no, no, no nothing. It is really well done. Um, which means you can use this little fuller, and you can flick it open. You can use this really nicely rounded flipper tab and flip it open. Or you can just use the button and drop it open. Which is a lot of fidget and a lot of fun in an excellent knife. Now this is the Black Micarta and stonewashed Nitro V version. They do make a lot of different handle colors. They are still Civivi after all. I really like the way they did this. All black hardware, blacked out pivot, right? It is bearings at the pivot, so the action, of course, is very smooth. It's got a little bit of jimping across the top of the blade, right where your thumb or my thumb lands. It's got a really nice sharpening choil down here at the base of the plunge. It's got a nice swedge across the top. This is just a great pocket knife. And at, what are these coming in? About, about 79, about 80 bucks, right? Uh, this is one of those knives that I just happily will recommend to whoever says, Hey, I'm looking for a good pocket knife. Here's one <laughs> for less than a hundred bucks for nitro V for a button lock. You really can't go wrong. Um, it came dead centered, but I've been carrying it for a while. And now it is just a little bit over here to the clip side. There is no wiggle, no rock, no nothing. So I'm not going to mess with it. It's not enough to be an issue, but you know, it did change a little with use. I've had this for, I guess, actually a couple of weeks now, and it's been in my pocket a bunch because of this really nice deep carry clip, right? It's got the nice flat top screws. So there's nothing to interfere with this thing sliding in and out of your pocket. It is stamped steel. It is steel liners, right? Now the liners are a little bit shadow boxed, they're a little bit proud of the scales. I don't mind that at all, but I know some people don't love it. I actually like it. I think it's a very attractive knife. They've milled this micarta just a little bit right here. You can see nothing severe, but it does give your finger, this your index finger in particular, a little bit of purchase when you grab the knife. The pocket clip doesn't, doesn't cause a hot spot for me, but it is relatively tall, which means it might you might feel it in your hand if you've got skinnier hands or smaller hands. The steel liners are incredibly milled. Uh, do I have a flashlight handy? How can I not have a flashlight handy? Here we go. Hang on just a second. All right, where were we? Right. Sorry, I had to go get my flashlight. The, uh, let's see if I can get that to show up for you guys. Yeah, see that? All those gray areas in there, that's all milling. Right, so they really took a chunk out of these steel liners to uh, do something about the weight. And we'll get to the weight a little bit later. Very simple design. As you can see, right, just a couple of barrel spacers. And one extra spacer here, which in fact is a lanyard uh, post, which is really nicely done. I don't mind lanyard space as long as it doesn't interfere with where they put the pocket clip. Um, which some knives do. Not this one. This isn't, it's just a great knife. <laughs> All right, let's do some basic size comparisons. We'll line it up on that line. Here it is against our 
old friend, the Spyderco Delica. As you can see, the Conspirator is considerably larger than the Delica. Here it is against our old friend, the Bug Out. As you can see, if we line up the tip to tip there, uh, Bug Out is, of course, considerably smaller. The Conspirator was a surprisingly large knife. I have to confess, when I saw pictures of it, I thought it was just another one of these sort of tiny Civitis they've been releasing lately, but no. It's a full-size pocket knife. Here it is against the full-size Benchmade Presidio 2. Now, the Presidio 2 is considerably longer in the handle, but not much longer in the blade. You get a lot more grip on the Presidio, but not a lot more cutting. And Nitro-V Nitro is good steel. I really enjoy it. What else do we have that's fun? Well, of course, here it is against our completely loved friend, the Norseman. You can see the Norseman is considerably bigger. I really like this Civiti Conspirator um, enough that I have been pocketing it a lot. And again, part of that comes down to the really nice deep carry clip uh, and its weight. So lately I work at a job where you can't have you know, stuff like this just hanging out of your pocket. They tend to get a little fussy, but this thing is really low key and I really like that. And again, the action is superb. I know uh, Metal Complex had an issue with something. I can't remember what it was. I haven't come across an issue with this. Oh, and I did want to point out the clip is reversible. You can swap that over to the uh, left hand carry. And because it's a button lock, you know, you can button lock with your left hand fairly easily. So this is really a well done ambidextrous, ambidextrous knife. Say that five times fast. <laughs> Let's get a look at the specs. We use that line there. The blade is just shy of three and a half inches of cutting on just over three and a half inches overall. So if you live in a state where a three inch blade is a problem, this is not the knife for you. Grip area from behind the flipper is one, two, three, and ooh, let's say three and seven eighths. I mean, it's, you get a lot of handle. You really do. It's good grip size. Closed length. One, two, three, four, and three quarters, which is really well done. From overall, from tip to tail, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the clip hangs out just a little bit over the top, so it's eight inches. Close profile is pretty nice. It's a larger knife from them, and of course it does have that flipper tab, so just keep that in mind, but we'll go ahead and measure it this way. So you're looking at an inch and a half at its widest. Now the flipper tab itself does have some fairly, it's got some good jimping on it. It really catches the finger, but it's not sharp on the edges. So when it's in your pocket, it's not going to be banging against anything too well. Yeah, you probably noticed that, but I tend to only carry a knife in my right front pocket and maybe a flashlight. So it's not really an issue for me. The party piece here really is the action. As a button lock, they've really mastered it. And it's interesting because I've watched them go from never having made one to making a few that were okay to this, which is perfect. <laughs> now, of course, the string of button lock knives is endless. But um, I like it, you know, because you've got your back locks and you've got your access locks. You've got your frame locks. Interesting locks from our friends over at CRKT. Um, I really like a good button lock. I really do. I think that it uh, it offers an alternative without giving up strength, durability, and function. That's very cool. At least I think so. So there we have it. Oh, well, let's weigh it. I did mention that it was reasonably light. Let's see what we come in at. All right, uh, 3.8 ounces on three and a half inches of Nitro V is not bad. It's a little bit, tiny bit over that ounce per inch that people like, but not much. And that's the steel liners, of course, and the steel clip. And it is a relatively, you can't, it's actually chamfered, but it is a nice slice of uh, Nitro V. So for 80 bucks, I think you cannot go wrong. At least that's my take on it. So there we have it. This is the Civiti Conspirator, and it is probably 
my favorite sous vide to come out in a very long time. The Keen Nader, of course, remains my favorite sous vide just because it's weird and I like it. <laughs> and the surprise stays the baby bug out just because that is such a useful and tiny knife. But in all of my knives, and I've got like 200, 250 or something at this point, these are the only Civivis I own. I've had lots, they come and go through the channel, but these two have stayed with me and now this one will also likely stay with me. I, uh, I just really like these three knives. So, nicely done Civivi. I love the Keenator. I love the funky blade. I, I just love this knife. I love the action. The Conspirator is a better knife than its price would tell you. For 80 bucks, and I know that's not really budget anymore, but it's not expensive either. And you get an awful lot of knife for $80. So there we are. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Civivi Conspirator. I have enjoyed adding one to the collection. And I think you would enjoy having one. If you are looking for a knife that costs less than $100 that will serve you well over time from a company that makes knives that last a really long time and good materials, check out the Civivi Conspirator. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I know I'm not. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.